want to be able to give you some principles to take with you so that you can be effective outside of the four walls. Did y'all catch that? I want to give you some principles so that you can be effective for God's kingdom outside of the four walls. I know many of you came in support uh, of your family, your loved ones, but sit tight and get something to go with you. Give me a little volume, son, on my mic, please. And the word of God reads from the New Living Translation, chapter 6, verse 6. Thank you, son. It says, take a lesson from the ants. It says, you lazy bones, learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, no prince, no governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? Will you wake? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you and I like a bandit. Father, thank you. Good spirit is in the house. Thank you, Father God, for the privilege, Lord, to dedicate them babies into the kingdom. Lord, thank you, Lord, for this Augustine of believers that's gathered here. I pray that you say something to save somebody's soul, because I know and you know, God, that everybody in here is not in right standing with your kingdom. And I pray that if someone that has walked with you have walked away, Lord, that you give them opportunity to come back to the Father and get reconnected to the King of kings and the Lords of lords. Show yourself mighty. Answer questions. Speak by your spirit. Let the power of agreement hit the body of Christ here as well as abroad. We thank you for the spirit of unity. Bring unity. Remove all division. Remove all strife. Bind up every witch, warlock, and every demon will try to come against momentum, come against peace, come against strength. We thank you, Lord. I get out of the way so that you can get in the way. I decrease that you may increase. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In this passage, which concerns the little ants, God is speaking to keep it in context to the slugger, the lazy person, the person that always making excuses, <laughs> the person always telling themselves what they can't do. If somebody do this, then I maybe this. If, it, if they stop treating me like this, then maybe I could do that. If it's her fault, it's their fault, it's his fault. If my husband do this, my wife do that. My God, this is to that person that's always making excuses uh, about their life. As I teach over here going off of Christ Church, it's a principle that we operate by. Whatever you don't like, my God, that's manifesting external, you got to look at what's going on internal. You and I are a product of that what is going on on the inside. Are y'all with me so far? As many of us is not happy about the external results. So you got to begin to look internal. That's why the great apostle Paul said, examine yourself to see that you be in right standing, in the faith with God. Don't you know that many of us can assume that we're in the right position? My God, a right standing and be completely out of God's will? Come on, somebody. And so therefore, I want to speak to a few people this afternoon that's sick and tired of making excuses about why your life is like it is. Because truth be told, to keep it on the dollar, don't nobody owe you nothing. Don't nobody owe you, I mean nothing. Ah, my God. And y'all with me so far. This refers to the lazy. This refers to the one who is lazy, idle, curless, and sticks to nothing. Minds no business and brings nothing to pass. We as a people of God, y'all don't like to deal with us as professing Christians. Because, see, we got to get healthy to be able to go outside the church walls and affect the world. And if we're not healthy, how do we expect for people out there to come to, to God if our life don't look no different from their life? Are you with me so far? Mm. We are good starters but terrible finishers. That should not be associated with professing believers. That we start out real strong, but we don't finish strong. And if we adopt a mindset that when I stumble and fall, I got to get back up. That's why you got to tell yourself like this pastor has told himself when I got saved April the 30th of 1995 in this 6 by 9 prison cell that I'm going on. 
to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like, that it ain't no shadow or turning. And I have been challenged. I have been lied on. I have been talked about. I have stumbled. I have failed, my God, but I still get back up because I'm going on. Because I told God that I'm going on. See, some of you need to get to the point where you tell God that you're going on. See, you got to have your mind made up. If your mind is not made up that you're going on with God, then you'll tap out real quick. At the first signs of someone criticizing you, at the first signs of somebody, every trial that you go through, or every obstacle, my God, if your mind ain't solidified that you're going to serve God, you're going to tap out and quit. Are you with me so far? Uh, I don't know about you, but it takes a made-up mind to serve God. That's why the great writer, my God, King Solomon, said, There's a man, no gender, thank it, pastor, so he becomes. You become, I become, the very thoughts. Mm, if you don't like it, my God, then you have the power through the word of God to do something about it. Paul says in the book of Romans, be transformed. As I teach over here, go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. You have that much of power and that much authority, my God, through the Constitution and being connected to God that you can be transformed by your mind. Why would Paul say be crossed over? Be transformed, not changed. Because as I teach y'all over here, I can't even get out the introduction. When you change, I'm sitting right here. But when I get tired of sitting right here, Pastor Champ, I can change my seat. And I can walk right over her. And then I can sit right here. And when I get tired of sitting right here, I can change that seat. See, I teach elementary because I don't need you to have no excuses when you stand before God. And then I sit right here. All I did is change seats. Change my position from where I started at. But when your mind is not transformed, even though I started there... Many people, my God, start out with the word change. And because my mind didn't change, just my body shifted positions. I'm right back where the very place I started at. That's right. That's good. But when you've been transformed, you can go from there to there to there to there. But when you try to come back here, something just don't fit no more. What used to excite you about starting here no longer excites you. What used to bring some fleshly fulfillment no longer brings fulfillment. What actually used to feel comfortable now no longer is comfortable. The people, places, and things that you put right here that you started out with when you, God called you to the kingdom, my God, they fit it in. But now that you've been transformed, now the people, places, and things don't fit no more. And so therefore when you are in a situation, my God, where things is uncomfortable, things don't fit no more, my God, you got to make a decision, not God. See, you would say we waiting on God and you praying, I'm believing in faith. Now God said, my God, I gave you the power to make a decision. The word of God says, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. He said, choose life. So if you're sitting here and you feel like you're dying, then why you keep choosing death instead of life? If you don't like, my God, with the, the feeling that you're going through, why you keep going around the same people, place, and thing that ain't helping you get past the pain that you have on the inside? Because in order to transform, it takes work. In order to change, it don't take no work. Because when you change, and I see y'all got to understand the difference from change. Change, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Change, see, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you, because I don't never assume that they know. Change is external, transformation is internal. Many Christians change external, but they're not transformed internal. Because when you are transformed internal, my God, it's going to show up in your life external. That's why we got so much mess in the church because the people are changing, but they're not transforming. They changing churches, my God, to go hide and say they outgrow some, but then they still got sin dominating their life. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Because many people change. I teach y'all, people change churches like they change cl clubs. You know why, Pastor? Because there's no covenant in the body of Christ. Pastor's not teaching covenant. They teach in church. God is a God of covenant. Yeah. Covenant, my God, cannot be broken. Contracts can be broken. Many people serve God on a contract and not covenant. And when you serve God off a contract, that means anytime you get mad, anytime God don't answer your prayer, you don't come to church no more. You quit tithing. Or you quit loving. Or you won't forgive. That's contract. That's a goat mentality with a sheep clothes on. Oh, my God. Yeah. Going over Christ, y'all know what we do. Let's give God a hand. So I believe there's much that we can learn from this little ant, little bitty tiny creature. Mm. 
So put point number one on the screen. Let's look at the work of an ant. So I shut in all day studies like I do, turn my phone off and get in God's face. And so I started looking at the ants and studying on ants. And there's a lot that leaped in my spirit. So then I started writing and I started putting things together. And here we come. The work of the ant. Up on the point number one, let's put A down. The ants as a team works with partnership. There is no division in the colony of an ant. I'm going so I promise you. So up under that, my God, the ants work in love. They work in love. They work in love. First Corinthians 13, my God, uh, uh, is it 13 or 12? It's 12, my God, the, the 13, the love chapter, the love chapter says faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. The Bible says Jesus so loved the world that he died. Love is a powerful word that we in America don't really appreciate. We haphazardly tell people, I love you, but really we don't. We tell people, my God, God bless you, and we really don't mean it. Come on, somebody. But one thing, my God, about the ants from when my study and my God, that, that they work in love. They don't fight with one another. The people of God should love one another. According to Hebrews 13, 1, write it down. The Bible says Paul warns us. Some people say Paul wrote it, but in the book of Hebrews 13, 1, it says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. As brothers and sisters. That's not talking about your, your biological brothers and sisters. That's talking about your Christian brothers and sisters. It says keep on loving. Oh, my God. The Bible says love covers a multitude of wrong. Even when they don't speak. Even when they wrong you, my God. You, my God, you still have to forgive and love. You still have to be able to love. One of the reasons why we can't forgive because we ain't got agape type love. And I'm not talking about going off of Christ church. I'm talking about churches all around the world including. It ain't just our church. My God is everywhere. Come on. We talking about Christians. My God that's not doing what the word of God said. We are saying that we are Christians. Ambassadors and representatives of God's kingdom. But when God says love your brothers and love your sisters. We won't give them no love. We won't forgive. That's not showing love. The Bible says that Jesus said in order to be forgiven by God that you must forgive. Why do we think that God, not Paul, not Timothy, not Peter, mm -hmm. come on, come on, not Je Jeremiah, not Isaiah, God said, woman of God, my God, that we have to be, for we have to forgive in order for God, the Father, to forgive us. So why do we think we can withhold forgiveness from, from someone, but then we turn around and ask God to forgive us? God is not going to go against the Constitution. Oh, some of y'all don't know what the Constitution is. The Constitution is this word. The Constitution is the Bible. God said in order for him, God, to forgive you that you must forgive. So when we come down there and we dance and then we shout, my God, and we giving God the glory. God said, yeah, you're doing all that, but you ain't went out and gave, forgave like I told you to forgive. You ain't forgave your brother. You ain't forgave your sister, my God. And so therefore we offer up strange fire to the Lord that he's not receiving. Don't you know when you come in the house of the Lord, I'm teaching right over here, baby, that God don't have to receive no mess. You can't just give God any type of worship. You can't just give God leftovers, baby. You got to give God what belongs to him. So when you stand at the altar and pray, and the Bible says, leave thy gift at the altar. Go back and be restored to your brother. Amen. So we don't get to stand in the, in the presence of the Lord and hold on to unforgiveness. Anything you don't confront won't change. Yeah. Right. See what I'm trying to say? So many people are standing up all around the country, pastor, my God, and refuse to forgive. Even though God has forgiven us, but we won't extend that. God forgiven us vertical, but we won't extend that horizontal. What do that look like? Some of you, because you don't want to forgive some of us, let me be careful because I'm not throwing no stone. We got to make sure that we forgive because don't you know, I'm going to tell you something. I got a lot of your freedom, your next breakthrough, your next miracle, miracle is connected to your, you being able to forgive. That's right. That's right. Forgiveness is a cold, cold. That's why I think the great John Verbrugge wrote, my God, the bait of Satan. It's a bait of Satan. Unforgiveness, my God, will hinder everything that God wants to do in your life. Because God cannot take you farther in the kingdom. God cannot do the things that he needs to do and want to do in your life. Even the things that you're praying for. Y'all listen to me, man. Even the things that you're asking God for and that you're needing God to do. If you do not forgive the people that has hurt you, my God. He say forget because it's hard to forget, but you got to forgive. Amen. Now, let me teach you this right here. As I teach over here, you can't hate nobody that you're praying for. So the people that has touched you, the people that has mishandled you, the people that has molested you, the people that has dropped you, the people that has lied on you, my God, pray for them. That's why the Bible says, Jesus said, pray for your enemies, my God. If you pray for them, it softens your heart. If you pray for them, my God, you can't hate nobody that you're really praying for. I ain't talking about God bless you. I'm talking about intercessory prayer where you got deep prevail, where you want what's best for them, even though they hurt you. You said, God, my God, bless them. God going to do something for you when you do that right there. Pray for the enemies. Pray for the people that's hurt you. 
See, that type of stuff is not being preached in the pulpits. But ants work in love. Ain't no competition. They ain't bitter at each other. And they have a colony. A colony. Mm. Also, two up under there, right? They are helpful. Ants are very helpful one to another. Ants are very helpful one to another. They look out for one another. As my daughter, my God, uh, Minister Q preached, my God, they have battle buddies. They don't go nowhere, my God, without each other. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, when Jesus sent the disciples out, he sent them out by two. Uh, many of you, my God, are trying to wage war against the enemy, and you're trying to do battle. You're trying to do it by yourself. But when you read the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus never allowed none of the disciples to go out and try to wage war against the enemy, my God, by themselves. You need accountability. You need somebody in your life. Quit telling yourself, I got this. Me and God got our own thing. That's why you defeated. Uh, my God, that's why you can't overcome the hangups and habits, my God, because you're trying to do it by yourself. There's some things you can overcome by yourself, but there's a whole lot of other hangups and habits and situations that you need somebody to help you walk through. That's why the Bible said, how can two walk together except there be agreement? The Bible also says, my God, if you're walking and you're by yourself and you fall in a ditch, pity the man that falls alone. But if you're walking with somebody and you fall, you got somebody to reach back and help you up, baby. See, many of y'all can't mm, many of you can't come out. You can't come out because you're trying to do everything by yourself. You know why you're trying to do it by yourself? Because you don't want nobody to find out who you really are. Or a person that don't want to be, ah, I said a person that don't want to have no fellowship, a person that always make an excuse about church, you show me somebody that don't love the fellowship. You show me somebody that profess to be a Christian, my God, that don't want to be around other believers. My God, I'll show you somebody with a whole lot of sin and a whole lot of excuses in their life and a whole lot of judging, my God. Because when you want to get free, you got to come to the light to get free. God never told you to stay at home. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, not to forsake the house of the Lord. My God, when you showed up, guess what? Another hypocrite showed up. So you can't keep casting stones at people talking about there's too many hypocrites Christian in the church. We all got some hypocrisy in us. We all got some stuff that we're working on, baby. Yeah, but we yeah. need each other to survive, my God. We need, I said, we need yeah, each other to survive. Yeah. I said, we need each other to survive. Look at the title of the sermon. The title of the sermon is I need you to survive. Quit thinking that you don't need nobody. Because God brought some of you to this church because I have a key that God has given me called Keys in the Kingdom, my God, to unlock your freedom, my God. Y'all look at the well page. Y'all see the testimony of Trey. You see the testimony of Jamie Yon. All these men coming up in this strung out, my God, and now they're free. They're serving in the ministry. they wise, love them. God is doing a work over it. People's souls are getting saved. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. It's major deliverance. Ah, I feel like preaching. That's major deliverance going on inside of her. Somebody got a key. Look at your neighbor and say, give me my key. Somebody got a key. Keys represents access. <laughs> Keys unlock doors in your life. <laughs> oh, somebody got a key to your low, your low self-esteem. Somebody got a word that can heal you. Somebody got a word that can encourage you. You need each other to survive. Amen. Oh, my God. When God put a body together, he put it together strategically. Yeah. You ain't just haphazardly here. Even for those that came to witness the baby dedication, you need to hear this word because many of you, my God, ain't properly connected like you need to be. And you need to get someone to get connected so the enemy won't kill you. Oh, I'm sorry, I know I talk fast, but when you, when you understand that you need help, yeah. one thing about ants, they carry each other's burdens. They rescue those, they rescue those who are buried, or those who fall into a pit. So therefore, when the ant colonies, they moving, when the ants is moving, and one of the ants get buried up under something, the ants that's in the front, they're going to spin, baby. They're going to come right back, my God. They're not going to leave their, their buried sister, their buried brother, my God. They're going to come help them that's buried up on the trials, buried up on the heartaches, buried up on the pain, buried up on the discouragement, buried up on the frustration, buried up on the physical abuse, mental abuse. They ain't going to just let them die, I tell you, my God. They're coming back to see about their brother. They're coming back to see about their sister. Oh, my God, don't get me started up in here. My God, don't get me started. Hey, we talking about the love of Christ, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ants ain't going to just leave their brothers and sisters buried. Buried up under the heavy load. You know she's struggling. You know he's struggling. But instead of you teaching them, my God, you pacifying them. Go see about your brother. Leave the 99 and go after the one. Come on, somebody. They very helpful. Ants are very helpful one to another. I said ants are very helpful one to another. It's going to take teamwork to build that center, man of God. It's going to take teamwork to do what God has called you to do. It's going to take teamwork to build just the beginning. It's going to take teamwork to build Martha's heart. It's going to take teamwork, my God, to build going off of Christ's church. It's going to take teamwork to build your business. It's going to take teamwork to execute your dreams, my God. You need somebody, my God. That's why God put it together. God ain't called nobody to do nothing on him. Uh, there's a lone ranger. You need each other. 
You need somebody to help you with your homework while you're in college. You need to be able to access and say, hey, I'm going through this right here. Have you ever been through this class, Q? Yeah, I did. I made an A in it. Well, Craig, go come over and help me, my God, because I'm struggling right now. Ah, ah. Learn how to reach out to people. Learn how to access your brother and your sister. If you know you're struggling, give it one of these sisters, my God, that you know is delivered from what you're struggling with. Oh, quit trying to be cute and get healthy for real. You know you're struggling, my God, but yet you don't want nobody to know. Why? Why? Because you people focus instead of God focus. God bought my God. I'm trying to help you. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to you, baby. I'm trying to help you, baby, because God has connected you together. Your freedom is tied up into me, baby. God brought me out, my God, so you could come out. And I already told you that, son. You next on the list, baby. Your testimony is on its way. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there, but it's coming, baby. It's coming. It's coming. Somebody's waiting on you. Who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same? Who in your life is suffering because you refuse to transform? Who in your life is suffering because you won't do what God told you to do? Oh my God, if you are sitting here and God has told you to do something, you ain't done it, you're in disobedience. That's sin. And the heavens is closed because you're in sin. Sin blocks the heavens from being open in your life. I know they don't preach it, but we do it going off of Christ church. Ah, oh my God. God says we are more than conquerors. We don't get to live dominated and defeated lives as Christians. We kings. We queens. We join us. We sons and daughters of the king. We have access to everything that heaven affords us. Oh my God, there is no sickness and diseases in heaven. There's peace in heaven. That's why he said traitor. My God, Calvary was an exchange. Exchange. My God, take all your shame, take all your guilt, and I'm going to take it for you. I'm going to give you my love. I'm going to give you my hope. I'm, come on, some of you need an exchange. Some of you that's been in Christ a long time, you need to come to the cross and give an exchange. Say, God, I'm coming to exchange this. Oh, my God, I got saved years ago, my God, but I got too much stuff on top of me. I done got connected to stuff. I got pythons all in my life, sucking the life out of me. I got people, places, and things that I'm connected to that I shouldn't be connected to, and I'm dying, God, but I'm finna exchange that today. The devil is alive if I walk up out of here today. Thank you, somebody in the church. So you got to be helpful one to another and uh, helpful one to another. Oh, my God. Galatians 6 and 2 says, my God, share each other's burdens. And this way you obey the law. And this way it means you obey the commandments. This, and this way you obey the Constitution. You obey the regulations, my God, of God's kingdom. As I teach y'all, the word of God is about a king and his kingdom. This ain't about church. This is about the king of kings and the lords of lords. Old Testament is God concealed and New Testament is God revealed. Come on, somebody. When you open up your Bible, you're talking to the king that created the universe. Oh, my God, if you want to know God's mind about something, open up the book. If you're struggling with discouragement, go to the back of the book and say, give me some scriptures on discouragement. If you need to be set free and delivered from something, go to the back of the book and say, give me some scriptures on deliverance and go read that. That's what God has to say. I always go vertical before you go horizontal. There's nothing that's on top of you that God can't fix. There's nothing in your life that God can't heal. Whatever's out of order, God got the power and authority to put it back in order and he's giving you the tools to work it. Come on, somebody. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. I need some volume, son, because I'm flowing. I know I'm talking a little fast because I'm watching the time, but I'm telling you, my God, there's nothing that you walked up in there with that God can't heal you from. I don't care what type of sickness or disease. As I told y'all, everything about sickness ain't got to do with just drugs and alcohol. Are you sick mentally? Are you ready to tap out? Are you so wounded and emotionally when you don't trust nobody because you've been disappointed and hurt? But let me help you like I teach over her, baby. And as I teach y'all, remind y'all going off of Christ church, some of that pain that you got, some of the trust issues you got, my God, why are you putting it on somebody else? God never told you to get with him in the first place. God never told you to invite them in your life anyway. So you didn't put people in your square. You didn't invite people in your life. They hurt you. They mishandled you. And now you mad at everybody. You don't trust nobody. But God said, I've never told you to invite them in your life. No way. I've never told you to get connected to them. That's why they got to be led by the Spirit. My God, we sitting up in there with all this pain. And all this anger talking about we going hard for Christ and we Christian. My God, we don't trust nobody. We won't forgive nobody. God is saying, my God, you blaming everybody else for your pain, but I never told you to get connected to him in the first place. You got connected to him, now you're wounded. You got connected to him. I never told you to marry him. I never told you to date him in the first place. Now he didn't mishandle you. Now you're angry at everybody. Now you don't trust nobody. That's your fault. That ain't God's fault. It ain't the devil's fault. It's your fault. Somebody give God a hand. Yeah. Woo, they ain't ready for me, Pastor. They ain't ready for me. They ain't ready for me. We angry. Let me tell you what that's called right there, Brother Derek. That's called deflecting responsibility. We got to find somebody to put our anger on. We got to find somebody to be bitter at, my God. But God said, I never told you. That's why you got to be led by God's spirit. Everybody that's, my, everybody, oh my God, everybody don't belong in your life. Yeah. You got to do clip, 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 baby. Yeah. Everybody ain't supposed to be in your life. I don't care if you knew them when they was in the third grade. That don't mean they're supposed to be in your life now. Oh, they're not used to this right here. Let me move forward because I can go on and on. Oh, my God. Another thing about the ants that I learned, Pastor, my God, not only do they work in love, they are helpful, but they operate in harmony. 
See, see, see. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh my God, I'm setting this up for the shift. My God, my God, they operate in harmony. Each one has a job. But none of them, none of the, none of the ants' jobs is more important than the others. The Bible says that we are all members of one body. Let me put some scripture on this. Turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Let me talk a little bit about this right here. 1 Corinthians. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Is the Spirit of God helping anybody so far? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm just going to give you a portion of this. My God, my God. They operate in harmony. So God is so strategic. God is so cold. I ain't going to use the ORU words. I'm going to use what you understand. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, check out what God said as Paul wrote. My guess is the human body uh, has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. See, there's many, this is one body. Even my guests, my God, that go to other churches, my God, we're still one body. But this one body, even this family that's in the house, my God, make up many parts. Many parts, there's many parts, there's many parts, my God, because to the body, in the natural, as well as to the spirit. Now jump down to verse number 15. It says, if the foot say, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear say, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, what eye, it says, would that make it any less a part of the body? No. If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, how would you smell? My God. An ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. Verse 20 says, yes, there are many parts but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The hand, my, the head can never say to the foot, I don't need you. My God. Verse 22 says, in fact, some of the parts, my God, of the body that seem the weakest and the least important are actually the most necessary. I said, let me read that again. The, in fact, some of the parts, verse 22, in fact, some of the parts of the body, my God, that's naturally as well as spiritual, my God, that, that seem the weakest and the least important are actually the most necessary. See, we got this shell, external, but how many know that you got to have a heart? You got organs. You got veins. You got what we call blood running through your veins. Come on, somebody. See, 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 see. I'm trying, oh, my God. Help me, Lord. Come on. You see what I'm trying to say? And so God, my God, Paul uses, my God, not only, my God, the God uses not only the natural, my God, to, to, to make a to make an understanding, my God, spiritually, that we are all one body made up of many parts. The eye can't say I don't need the hand. The hand can't say I don't need the mouth. You can't quit. I, 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 the, the title is I need you to survive. I, I can't say I don't need you. I need you, Oliver. This work that I'm called to, everybody can't handle it. That's why God strategically bought certain people that come out of the struggle because they can understand the people that I'm called to. Everybody can't handle the people that I'm called to. So I need you to survive. Come on, somebody. I need you, son, whoever you are, to survive. I need you, man of God, to survive. That's why you made your way over here because anything can't feed you, baby. I need you, Pastor Janice, to survive. I need you. Cousin, I need you. My God, you need each other to survive. I said you need each other to survive. We are made of many parts. My God. Oh, my God. Everybody's, my God, is different, but we are one body. Father-in-law, you know what it is, baby. That's right. I need you to survive. Come on, mama, and I need you. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you to survive. Your gifts are welcome. Your gifts and who you are are welcome. What you bring to this body of Christ is welcome. My God, who you are and what God created you to do is welcome. That's why I allow y'all to preach and teach up and off and her. That's why I train y'all and release y'all into operating in your purpose, my God. Because I need you to do what God has called you to do. Because I need you to help this body, my God, grow and become everything that God has called it to become. My God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. And so, my God, we need each other. And my God, each one has a job, as I told you, my God, but none is more important. The power of the early church arose out of their unity. They was up in the upper room, Toya, my God, and they was praying. <laughs> oh, my God, then, my God, the Holy Ghost fell. Oh, uh, my God, Psalm 133 says, when the people are gathered together in unity, their God commanded the blessing, my God. Oh, my God, my God, ants, my God, they operate in harmony. They stay unified, my God. Ain't no bickering, ain't no jealousy, ain't no competition, my God. We all one trying to accomplish one goal, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so, therefore, if you want to see harmony, <laughs> if you want to see the blessing in your life, my God, in your relationship, 
relationships get on one accord. <laughs> oh, the power of agreement. There's too many of us want the blessing, but there is no agreement. That's too much division in the homes. Too much division among sons and daughters. And, 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 and too much division among mother and daughters and sons and fathers and stuff like that. If you want the blessing to come in your life, my God, get in agreement. Get on one accord. Bring the harmony. Drive out all the division. Drive that stuff. I go home and open up your windows, even though it's cold. Open up your back door. My God, do what you got to do and tell division it got to go. Tell stress it got to go. Tell my God, put that stuff out of your house. You have the authority. You have the authority, my God, to go home and command your house to line up with the kingdom. Everything in your house got to line up, baby. Yeah, my God, speak over your husband. Don't go hard for God. Tell him in the name of Jesus, I command you to line up. I command you to shift, my God. Oh, my God, is it possible that he ain't came in because your lifestyle don't match what you preach? Is it possible he ain't came in because he's seeing something different on Sundays than it is on Monday? But you have that type of authority. The Bible says you can call those things that be not as though they are. You can speak stuff into existence. If you don't believe me, read the book of Genesis. God spoke the world into existence. Oh, we got the kingdom living on the inside. You got power in you. You got authority inside of you. My God, you can command every wound, every scar, every addiction, every anger. You got to submit and you got to bow down. No longer will you dominate me. No longer will you control me. No longer will your flesh tell me what to do. I'm taking authority over you today. My God, I'm tired of this diffusion. I'm tired of this division inside of my temple, my God. I'm torn between two of Opinions, my God. One minute I'm happy, the next minute I'm sad. One minute I want to go hard for God, the next minute I want to quit. That's because you're divided. You ain't got no unity in your mind. Your mind is all over the place. I can't get nobody to say something. Sometimes you got to lay your hands on your mind. Say, God, fix my mind, God. Touch my mind, God. Help my mind, God. Oh, my God. Oh, we look real good, but we're struggling in our mind. As a man thinking. As a man thinking. So is he. No gender. So is he. No gender. Are y'all with me so far? Mm. So the first church, my God, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, was birthed out of unity and harmony. Go up into the upper room and sit there. Don't move. Follow instructions. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. Obedience. The 120 in the book of Acts was up in the upper room. Brother Taylor, on one accord. They did what the father told them to do. Go up there and sit still. And don't move until you are filled with power. And when they got there on one accord, when everybody there, all 120, when all of them was there, then God moved. Not when it was 119, moved stock. When it was $1.20, that means 120. When it was all there, he didn't move a day before. When everybody got in position. And it's one thing to be in the same room, but are you in agreement? Yeah. That's why Jesus said, come here, Pastor Champ. That's why Jesus said, will any two, come on, Pastor. I know you, will any two touch it or she? And agree. That's why when you join hands with somebody, it's not always good to start running off in fake tongues. Because, see, you may be saying amen to something that God don't want you to be in agreement with. That's why when you pray and touch, I'm going to help y'all over here. You need to listen. Got to listen. Because I don't want to say amen to something that I know that's not in agreement with the king and his kingdom. But, see, you won't know that if you ain't in the Bible. You won't know what the kingdom is. You don't know what God's will is. You don't know what God's purpose is. So you're saying amen because everybody praying. Amen to what? What you saying amen to? And so therefore, my God, oh, my God. Don't you understand this? Right? Don't you know when you pray, you got to pray in faith? Don't you know, my God, God wants to honor and bless our prayers, prayers, but many of us is asking God for stuff that we can't handle. So God loves you enough. He got to hold up because he can't give you something because the blessings of the Lord will kill you if you can't handle it. See what I'm trying to say? It took 18 and a half years of going hard for God before he birthed going hard for Christ's church. And many of them thought I was crazy. How that gangster going to birth the church? Ain't nobody going to follow him. He preach too hard. He too real. He go too loud. He talk too fast. Who going to follow him? Well, look around. Come on, somebody give God a hand. What am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? Is that some things will begin to shift in your life when you invite the power of agreement. We're not unified. Don't you know God can only bless what he called for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my God, you could be in church and be out of order in God. Yeah. Just because you're in church don't mean you're in right, proper standing with God. Right. God blesses unity. He blesses covenant. He blesses, he blesses agreement. Are you praying against God's will for your life? Are you in God's will? And are you praying against God's will for your life? But what is God's will? I don't know what God's will is, but I know it's the first thing it is. The Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom. Until you find out what your purpose is, you need to be doing Matthew 6, 33, seeking first the 
kingdom. It didn't say seek first church. As I teach y'all over here, my God, I tell people, don't come to church. Pastor Jew, I'm coming back to church, man. I need to come to church. I tell them, no, don't come to church. Church don't change you. That's what, hurt, that's what hurts a lot of people. I'm being serious, y'all. First time when they get in trouble, first thing they want to do, they want to say that I'm going back to church. That's the problem. People are coming to sit in church, but they're not coming to meet the God who died for the yeah, church. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's heavy right there. See, that's, see, see so let me say it again. You come to church, and when things don't happen, that's because you're coming to church. You're looking for men to do what only God can do. Yeah. I teach you got to come to Christ because you can't meet Christ and something not change or die. Oh, my God, you can't bring your pain, your hurt to Christ and he not fix it. Oh, my God, you can't bring your habits, hangs up, addictions, worry, worry, whatever it is to Christ and he not do something about it. That's why I tell him, mother, come to Christ. Church don't change you. Many of us got wounds right now because we look for the church to do something only God could do. And you offended at church. The church ain't done nothing to you. When you should be offended at self because you came looking for men to do something only God can do. That's what I mean. I can't get nobody. <laughs> oh, my God. Somebody going over Christ, give God a hand. My God. Mm. We cleaning up the house, baby. We cleaning it up. We cleaning it up. We cleaning it up, my God. If the church, my God, stand together in the power of the Holy Ghost, hell would tremble. Hell. Mark 3, 25 tells us similar in New Living, a family splintered or divided by feuding will fall apart. That's your natural family as well as the church body. If there's a whole lot of bickering, a whole lot of jealousy, a whole lot of mess, it's going to crumble the church. It's going to crumble the church. But if we do what the scriptures say do and understand we ain't got no stones to throw, I got splinters, planks, and all that stuff in my eye. I'm looking at what somebody got in their eye, but I want to look at what I got in my eye. Yeah. Yeah. Children, I say, that brings disagreement and all that old type of stuff. You don't have that problem in the colony of an ant. They work in harmony. They ain't got time to be fighting and bickering. That's right. My God, my God, they storing up in the summertime food for the winter. Mm-hmm. They carrying on a great work. They being intentional about their life. They focus. What I teach y'all over, they laser focus. Yeah. I ain't got time to be bickering and complaining with you. I'm carrying on a great work, Nehemiah. I ain't got time, my God. If I'm, if I'm focused on what God told me to do, why? I ain't got time to look at you. I ain't even saw you. I'm on to the next thing. Come on, baby. Many of you, my God, is criticized because you ain't doing nothing. When you ain't busy in the kingdom, when you ain't busy in the body, since God brought you to the body, my God, to get busy. That means find out what you created to do. And when you're carrying on a great work, you ain't got time to worry about what she got on and what her hair looked like and what he got on. You ain't, well, well, I ain't even saw it. I'm, on, I'm, I'm carrying on a great work. I ain't focused on what you got going on. I said, I'm not focusing on because you're too busy carrying on what God told you to do. Thank you, woman of God. I got a lot of grievance off of it. I know they don't like it, but it is what it is. Oh, my God. When you focus on what God told you to do, you ain't got time to be worried about anybody else. That don't mean you don't care, but you don't see all that pettiness. You ain't sticky. You don't nothing stick to you. My God, my your people talking about you, you ain't worried about that. You're, like, you're going on about your business. You ain't got time to worry about that. Oh, you're going on. You're pressing on, baby. People that sit around and don't do nothing, I always complain about the people that is doing something. Come on, sir. That's some other church, though. Yeah. <laughs> Catch what I said. When you're carrying on what God told you to do, you ain't got time to look at somebody else. Amen. And when you think about the grace and the mercy of God, how can you judge somebody? How can you got the audacity to put on Facebook and talk about people, my God, and voice your concerns, my God, when you were just, mm. That's why I would say the blessing is in remembrance, Pastor. I ain't never forgot one of my sons, my God, where you at, Trey? Raise your hand up there. My God, run down there. Come on, son. I got to show him again, my God. Come on, you got to run, baby. You ran from the police, run for God. Come on, somebody. My God, stand right here. Now, here this man is, my God. Oh, my God, I'm watching. Here this man is right here, my God. He kept coming to church <laughs> with your dying man. Stand up, baby. Stand right there and be a witness to your son. I mean, your husband. My God, here it is. Mm. Here this man is right here. Was coming to church smelling like a, a pound of marijuana. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, come to my men's meeting, smell like weed, my God. And guess what the pastor told him? Keep coming. Keep showing up. I didn't throw him out. You know why I'm able to say that? Because I ain't forgotten what I should smell like weed, when I should drink alcohol, when I should smoke dope. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Look at me today. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Woo, my God. Mm. Come on. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, see, 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 when, when, when you didn't forget what God has done for you, then you'll look at somebody like that and say, you can't come to my church smelling like weed. 
I'm glad he came. And so therefore, mighty God, look on the web, on the, on the YouTube, my God. But I told him to keep coming up. We went on a consecration, a 21-day fast. I said, quit smoking weed for 21 days and watch what God do. He yeah. quit smoking weed, Pastor, during the consecration from January the 2nd to the 23rd. My God, God set him free. My God, he passed away. He went from $12 to $20. Because... <laughs> Because guess what? The pastor had a key to help him get free. So I told him, my God, if you had not submitted, I said, give me 21 days of no smoking weed. Yes, yes, yes. He was talking about somebody that smoked weed every day. He was in the barbershop talking about he smoked weed every day, every day. He wouldn't even eat before he smoked weed. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? He would pass up food that his wife cooked just to smoke dope. Yeah. I said, give me 21 days. Yeah. 21 days. Yeah. It takes 21 days to break a habit. It takes 21 days to build a habit. And look at him today. Look at him today. Ah, oh my God. Why did I say that? Because, see, when you have a judgmental spirit, you turn down harmony. You speak against unity. You criticize because you forgot what God has done for you. I don't ever want to forget what it was like living in the streets and living in abandoned houses. Sleeping in abandoned cars, selling my clothes for drugs, gang banging in and out of prison. I don't ever want to forget that. It keeps me humble. I receive that mother. How can you throw somebody away? God didn't throw you away. Mm. Judgmental spirit. And I already talked to y'all about proper judgment. It ain't judgment, it's correction. Paul said, it's not my job to judge those on the outside of the faith, Corinthians. But if you profess to be a brother and a sister in the Lord, and your life is a stumbling block, Apostle Paul said, I have a right to come to you and say, Sister Lisa, I need to talk to you, woman of God. Jamie Ann, I need to talk to you, man of God. You know that. Take that down off of Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Why are you talking like that? Why are you treating her like that? See what I'm trying to say? You a brother, man. You a porter in the church, man. People see you standing up. I teach y'all, we ain't finna be no public successes and private failures. I said, we're not going to be no public successes and private failures. So, my God, when somebody coming to you out of love and they're and they, and they telling you something, my God, I bring it to your attention, something that you're doing, and you know what they're telling you is right, and they come in the right spirit, led by the spirit. The Bible says, if I accept constructive criticism, I will prosper my soul. What is my soul? Mind, will, and emotion. But to reject constructive criticism, I condemn my own self. Yeah. Don't you know if you don't bear sin, sin going to embarrass you? God has sent somebody in your life, my God, to call that thing out, my God, before it embarrasses you. Sin will embarrass you. All right? If you don't stop, grace and mercy covers you. But sooner or later, you got to make a decision to stop sinning. God was sent somebody because he's trying to give you warning. The Bible says God gave warning before destruction. He's giving a warning, son. Ain't nobody trying to judge you. We're trying to help you. Yes, Lord. See, that's where harmony coming in. That's where harmony come in. That's where harmony come in. That's where harmony come in. But a person that's bitter, a person that, my God, is wounded, a person that don't spend time with God, instead of them receiving, instead of them receiving something in love, they're receiving, my God, in anger. Because yeah. they're already bitter. Yeah. You can't disciple broken people. That's it. They got to want to be free. Yeah. If you know you're struggling, you got to say, my God, the people that dealt, when Jesus, my God, brought, brought healing to the lame, my God, the cripple and the blind, the Bible says they brought the people to Jesus and he healed them. Oh my God, some of y'all got family and loved ones sitting beside you. You know they're struggling. Bring them to God this afternoon. Amen. Bring them. Take them by the hand. Say, you know you got to get that up. You know you've been going off. You know you've been cussing me out, beating me up and all that. Today is getting you getting free. I'm bringing you to the Lord today. Oh, that's right. <laughs> ah, my God. See, that's harmony. Quit crying about something you ain't willing to fix. Quit complaining and talking to God about something you ain't willing to change. Some of y'all, God and I already told to make a decision, but you ain't made it. And it ain't getting no better. It's getting worse. Because he already gave you the answer. He already gave you the answer. Shift. But see, let me, let me balance it out. Because some people shifting, but they shifting out of flesh and calling out. And God told them, God ain't told you nothing. You still conquered by God elementary stuff. But yet you talking about you going on to the next level. You can't even live safe for second to second, but you going on to the next level. You can't even stop smoking dope, but you talking about you called to go to the nations. You are, but kill the dope first and then go to the nations. Don't get in the nations and start smoking dope. I, I need to stay with me. That's missing y'all. You're called to do great things, but you got to conquer the little thing. It's the little foxes that destroy the blind. God is trying to trim you. God is trying to mold you. God is trying to shape you to get you prepared for where he's taking you to. 
That's why you can't drag sin. The Bible says, my God, our sins follow behind us. Our sins, 2 Timothy, follow behind us, my God. We trail behind us. Come on, Pastor Tim, walk with me, my God. Some of our stuff, my God, because God's grace and mercy is covered, but our sins is Pastor Tim. They follow us everywhere we go. I said everywhere we go, my God, our decisions, our sins is following us, my God. And then God is saying change. God is saying stop. God is saying I'm giving you mercy. I'm giving you grace. Please stop. He done sent somebody to you. He done told somebody to call her. He done told somebody to, uh, to, to, to pull him out and say, come on, man, I need to talk to you. But you won't submit. You won't quit, my God. And so therefore, sooner or later, my God, your sin, my God, that was trailing you, now I didn't judge you. Right up on you. Something that used to follow you now is up on you. That's where the embarrassment come in at. Yeah. But how long, how long had this situation been following you that you refused to, to give up? And now that's brought judgment. And now you're embarrassed. I want to pass the preach. And he speak to that thing. Jesus. Now you angry at me because I just spoke something that I didn't know you was dealing with, but that was God. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you to survive. I need you to survive. It's a different flow. Strategically setting going home for Christ up for a major shift. There are certain things that will not go in this next season. Y'all been hearing me say that? God and I already started. It's things I didn't even have to deal with. He did it for me. You ain't got to do nothing. Never attack in anger. Never attack in anger. Just sit back and chill. Hold your purse. You hold your post. Be still and know that I am God. That's all right. It's all good. Some of us, my God, you ain't got to push nobody away. You ain't got to be nasty to nobody. God going to clip them if they ain't supposed to go in the next season. Let me close it with this here. You can't be, as y'all heard me say, at peace with God if you're not at peace with yourself. Many people that quote scripture and speak in tongues, I'm not criticizing or judging nobody. Hear my heart. Because my job is to obey God and help you get free. I don't want you to walk up out of here condemned, defeated, when you have all the authority in heaven backing you. When all you got to do is make a decision. You can't be at peace with God if you're not at peace with yourself. And if you are not at peace with yourself, you got to begin to do a self-evaluation and say, why am I so unhappy? Why am I dealing with so much pain? Why am I so angry? Why am I so frustrated? Why am I so bitter? Why is it I keep attracting this type of person in my life? Why do I keep attracting that type of person? Why is it that I can't seem to never get a break? You have to ask yourself those questions. Because you can't never be at peace with God if you're not at peace with yourself. Don't you know one of the major weapons that the enemy use against the people of God is guilt and shame? If you receive God's forgiveness, then you got to believe that you are forgiven, and then you got to make the decision to stop doing things that's causing you so much shame and so much pain, man. Yeah. And then I got to come up off of her and preach like a madman because I'm trying to build you up and let you know that you are kings and queens and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Yeah. And quit counting yourself out. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That God gave you dominion over the earth. My God, trying to build you. You know what I'm trying to say? Don't you know that the enemy used, my God, division, a lack of love. Some, my God, some of the hard-heartedest people in the world are Christians. They are insensitive to the needs of other people, saved and unsaved. They will let you die before they reach out and help you. It's sad, church, the body of Christ. You know why? Because the Bible says when we are dominated by sin, we become insensitive to the Holy Spirit. Many Christians, my God, operate off of feeling. Feeling. Body is feeling. If I don't like something, if it didn't sound right, I don't like the way he said it, now I'm offended. Feeling. That's carnal. That's flesh. The mind is reason. The mind is reason. Many people reason themselves out of God's will. Many people reason themselves out of God's will. They don't have no self-discipline over their mind. Their mind didn't talk them out of purpose. It was right there on the cusp of a breakthrough. And they felt like God said, do something. God ain't told you none. Your flesh spoke louder than God's purpose in your life. And then you have the conscience. The conscience listens to the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
But when you have a wounded conscience, you can't hear God. Ooh, when your conscience is wounded, when you have already thought, when you already reasoned with yourself that your time is up. Uh, I don't need him. I don't need her in my life. Oh my you have God. already, my God, deceived your own self. And so therefore, when God is trying to give you warning not to make that decision because your conscience is seared, you shun the voice of God. And you bring shame on your own life. Because God said, God ain't told you nothing. Your flesh told you. You know why I'm able to say stuff like that? Because I've been walking with God. I've seen a whole lot of people quit. And give up on God. Pastor. From Greenwood all the way to present. Yeah. They start out going hard, Pastor, but they get contaminated. They lose focus. They forget that God's grace and mercy saved them. They start exalting themselves. Mm-hmm. One of the things that Pastor Larry Odom told me, a retired pastor, 40 years of pastor, he said, just stay small, Pastor, in your own eyes. Mm-hmm. Bishop McIntosh, my spiritual father, said this. He said, don't get intoxicated off your own harvest. That's right. As God begin to increase, as God begin to bless, don't get intoxicated. You know what happened? Let me close it with this. When you was crawling around on the floor, when you needed the church to help you, yeah, yeah. when the church wrote the check mm-hmm. to be a blessing to you, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you treat the church like it's a that's, stepdad. That's real. That's real. When you needed your brothers and sisters, you was at church on the regular. I'm still with the sermon. Now that God has took the pressure and the squeeze off, now all of a sudden you don't need your brothers and sisters. When you need a ride to church, when they took time to get up extra early to pick you up, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Now you done had your car for six months, you ain't stopped to pick up nobody. Yeah. See, see, this real preacher that's going home for Christ church, because I'm trying to clean. After you catch the sheep, you got to clean them. Yeah. And I can't clean you, but the Spirit of God going to clean you. Yeah. But I got to be willing to step out the Ooh, thank you. Hear that bullshit. It's okay. So, ah! Oh, it's coming. I feel it in my spirit, boy. He's on this way. That's the next one. I'm telling y'all. That is the next one. That's the next one. As I shift to close, harmony is disrupted, Pastor, when people have forgotten what God has done for them. Harmony and division and teamwork is lost when people forget the condition that they was once in. If you know God has really done something for you and you know you're only in the position uh, you only have the job, uh, the house, the car, the clothes, whatever it is. Even the peace that you have because of God. How can you look down on somebody else? Some of you that you didn't see God, you didn't taste the goodness of the Lord. You should do everything you can within the power if you're connected to this body or you at another church to keep unity in the church. Anytime you see somebody that's causing division in the church that you attend, you should be driving that spirit up at the church. Speak death to that division spirit. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to stop right there. I need you. I can't sing. I can't play the piano, but I need him to. See, I want an elementary because I don't need you having no excuse. Come here. Come here. Jesus was willing to get down in the mud. To bring somebody to the top. Jesus was willing to leave the 99. To go after the one that was going hard for Christ. But he got wounded for whatever reason. She got wounded. But he loved them enough to say leave the 99 and go seek that one. When the last time you prayed for your brothers and sisters that you know they're struggling. When the last time you said God give me a burden for the lost. Are we so bitter where people are dying and going to hell and we don't even care? Good message. I need you to survive. I can't do what I do without y'all. I'm just speaking in general. Mm -hmm. I need you, Mother Melody. I need you, Sister Reed. I need you, son. I need you. We got to understand at this church that we need each other. I can't do what I do without you. Temple ministry can't run without you. Them girls that just begin to need us. I need you, Antoinette. I need you, Moustak and Sarah. I need my queen to just walk through this door. 
See, I'm, I'm being serious, y'all. Yeah. See, because see, see, the church is full of a whole bunch of, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not talking about this, go, I'm talking about the church as Christians is robbing God of the glory on the earth because we can't go out there and affect the world because we're not affecting the world because we are infected by the world. We can't affect the world because we are infected by the world. Everybody want to be entertained on Sundays. Make sure we got the big lights. Make sure we dress in all the little skinny jeans and all of those type of stuff. Ain't nobody preaching about holiness and righteousness. I'm serious. Entertain me. Don't ask me to transform, though. Don't ask me to stop doing something, my God. And we talking about I need you to survive. If you need me to survive, help me. Don't let me die. Yeah. Tell me when I'm out of order. Tell me when I'm wrong. Tell me when I'm out of order. Tell me. Help me. Love on me. Pull me to the side like my son is done. Say, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I need to set up a meeting with you. I want to let you know, my God, I need to talk to you, Pastor. You hurt me right here, my God, and I needed you. Uh, and we had our moment, our, our Kairos moment in the office. Come on, Minister Oliver. And we broke down and we cried and we loved each other and kept it pushing. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need each other. You need each other. Some of y'all that don't want to talk to your mama, you need your mama. She did the best she could. Yes, she made some mistakes. I'm coming in. She made some mistakes. She didn't, she didn't have a good model herself. She didn't have a good example herself. She did the best she could. Right. Give your mama a pass. Forgive her and let her go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive your mama and let her go. Yeah, yeah. I know she said some things that hurt you. I know she scars. I know she hit you upside the head and stuff like that. And they told you you weren't going to be nothing, daughter. Look at you today. Pastor. Mm. You need each other. You need each other. My God. Thank you, Lord. I need you. Not only do I need you, God needs you. That's why you didn't die. Thank you, Lord. God bought every last one of you here, whether you're a member or a guest, because you need to hear this word. The quicker you get in God, the quicker you get in covenant with God, God got a key to unlock your necks. You're trying to overcome stuff. The Bible says, cursed is the man, no gender. Trinity that trusted in the arm of flesh, leans on flesh, arm, people, everything but God. There are certain things you're dealing with that only God can fix. There's a hole in all of us that only God can fill. Sex can't fill it. Dope can't fill it. Money can't fill it. Entertainment can't fill it. Tony Braxton can't fill it. They went to the concert, but some of them didn't even go to church. But God, I need you. You think God don't see that? I ain't, you can go, go, that's clean fun. Tony back, clean. but did you come back to church? That's what I would tell people. Go have fun. Enjoy. You need some entertainment. Don't worship it and forget to worship the God who created it, though. See, that's a heart issue. Keep your heart right. Thank you for those that's wiping tears, crying, because it's the truth. It's the truth. I don't preach for entertainment, I preach for deliverance. This is the deliverance ministry. This is not to be entertained. I'm not here to entertain you, I'm here to help you. That's my mantle. And the quicker you submit to it, the quicker you'll get free. Every head bow. Let's take her kingdom business. Everybody in here know they ain't in the world they need to be at. Some of them they got bitter instead of better. And they got bit by a python, listening to people that you shouldn't be listening to. You done been talked out of your assignment. Your church been good to you. You done forgot what the church has done for you. You forgot what the people has done for you in the church that you're connected to, whether you're a member of this church or you're a member somewhere else. It's time to get that right. Remember, we dealt with the love. Ants work in love. Ants, my God, who, my God, are helpful one to another. Ants operate in harmony. Are y'all with me so far? It's time to get it right. So with every head bowed, I need you to be honest. I need you to be vulnerable and transparent. This is your opportunity. You know what it is. Don't worry about your neighbor. Because when the... When the knock come, nobody knows the day or the hour. When your knock going to come, you got to ask yourself, am I really ready? Am I going to be one of the ones that said, Lord, did not prophesy in your name? Did not cast out demons in your name? Did not feed the homeless? Did not preach? Did not teach? And God says, depart from me. I never knew you. You never became intimate with me. I never was Lord. You never gave your life to me. You did what you want, how you want it, when you want it. But you said you was a Christian. That's not Bible. He said, I never knew you. 
even though you was in church, even though you was a greeter, even though you was a porter, even though you worked on the hospitality team, even though you was part of gang time, even though you was on the usher board, financial team, but I never knew you because I never was Lord. You did what you wanted to do when you wanted to do it. You never gave up the stuff I told you to give up. You never stopped horn around. You never stopped smoking. You never stopped doing that stuff. You never forgave. You never let it go. You stayed bitter. You never got better. My God, you didn't reach back to help nobody. You didn't walk in love. These are the type of things when God opened up the books, baby. It's in the Bible, my God, that he going to look at. You have to be honest with yourself this afternoon. This is a real message for a time that we're living in because it's wicked out here in this world. And I want you right. So if you don't know Christ and you have never, this call here is for those who have never, ever, never, ever, ever accepted Jesus Christ. Or you may think that you have, but you're not for sure. If you have never, ever accepted Jesus Christ, I want you to raise your hand. Any person that want to give their life to Christ. Today is the day. Anybody. I'm going to wait on you. Anybody. Just raise your hand. Slip your hand up. If that's you. Never gave your life to Christ. And you want to give your life to Christ. It's something that God said. And that you're ready to come in. You got a lot of division in your life. You got a lot of uh, 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 pain. There's no love. And you're ready to receive this love. That Christ offers. To the people that profess to be Christians. Is that you? First time salvations. First time salvations. Today is the day God loves you. I'll wait a few more minutes. God loves you. You want to know for a fact that if something happened, that you're ready to go. If that's you, just raise your hand. You're tired. You're tired. And you're ready for something different. If that's you, raise your hand. Come on up, son. Come on up. You ain't the only one. You're tired. Get in, Pastor Tedrick. You're tired. You're tired of the, uh, 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 the shame and the guilt. Bring the woman of God on up right there. Bring on up. You're ready to surrender all. You're ready to walk away from the stuff. If you're ready to come, oh Lord, if you're ready to give up on life, if that's you, raise your hand. Many of us are ready to give up on our marriages. God ain't told you to. Raise your hand. My God. Come on. Come on. Come stand by her, baby. Help my daughter up here. Come on, I need her up here. Come on, help your mama up here, daughter. We speaking. We handle business over here. Some of you men, you ain't been honest with your wife. Bring her up here, pastor, right there. You ain't been honest with your wife. You know what you got cracking. You know what you're doing when she ain't around. You ought to be up here. Let's get it right. Ain't nobody got no stones to throw at you. If you know you ain't been treating her right, you know you angry and bitter at your wife, then you ought to be up here. I'm talking to the men now. I'm talking to the men. You ain't living right. You go to church, but you ain't living right. You go to church, but he saved you, but he's not Lord. Is that you? Is you finna walk out here and go drink and smoke dope and all of those type of stuff? My God, that's God talking to you. I ain't afraid to provoke you. Thank you, son, for keeping it on the dollar. Today is the day of salvation for you, baby. I appreciate you, man of God. Your best days are coming. Yeah, 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 because you was willing to step out. My God. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else is in her? Who else is in her? Who else is in her? This group right here. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he won't. It. You don't have to tell him to get down there, Pastor. Look what he did himself. See, that's godly sorrow. That's not worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow, you are staying, but you won't repent. Come on, somebody. That's godly sorrow right there. He humbled himself. My God, I give God the glory. I know what I felt in the spirit. My God, I got about 10 more seconds for that next person. I'm waiting for the next person to come to God. You can't get healed if you stay in your seat. They brought the people to God and he healed them. Who do you need to bring to the Lord, neighbors? Do you got enough love to know that your sister or your brother or your husband, your wife, your daughter is struggling? Will you take them by the hand and bring them to the Lord this afternoon? Is that you? Is it somebody, my God, that's waited on you to grab their hand and say, come on, let's go, because you know we got to get up here. Not just you, we got to get up here. Is that you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, woman of God. Who else needs somebody to bring them and you know they need it? Thank you. They coming from everywhere. I know how to obey God in this church, baby. Who do you need to get? My God. Some of you may say, well, you need to be bringing yourself up there. That's two. We come together. How can two walk together except there be agreement? Today is the day. Come. I want your soul right. I want your mind healed. Healing in the house of the Lord. Boy, we look real good, man. 
We dressed all up, but we wounded. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We dressed all up, but we wounded. it. Yes, Lord. They coming. They coming. They coming. My God. Uh, don't let Hennessy keep you on the other side, baby. Yeah, yeah. Don't let that good weed, because it's legal now, to keep your butt on the other side. You better come get it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real in the field over here, baby. God separate the sheep from the goats in the body of Christ. Yes, Lord. Thank you for these babies, man. Look at these kids. My God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. My God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have tasted the goodness of the Lord, and you know you're not serving God the way you should be serving God, and you are ready to recommit your life back to Christ, God says something to you. You're not forgiven. You're not walking in love. And you're ready to come back. You ought to be coming. That's you. Come. Come. They coming. They coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're ready to come to the Father. They coming. They coming. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Those that's already at the altar, focus on God. Don't focus on nobody around you. Talk to God because I can't save you. I got you to God. Now it's up for you to get in God. Come on, come on, come on. Talk to God. Thank you, Lord, for this move. Who else out there? They know they're not right with God. They want to come back to the Father. Who? Who is it? Who is it? Corinne, go get Pastor Dean for me. Go get Pastor Dean, Corinne. Who is it? Go rob and get it quick. It up, Asha. Today is the day. Today is the day. I got just a few more minutes. My God, who else? Leave the 99 and go out there to one. Leave the 99 and go out there to one. I'll come after you. I'll wait on you. Thank you, son, for coming. Thank you, Lord. Who else? Who else? Mm, thank you, Lord. I want to make this last plea to my teenagers. If you're struck with teenagers, Self-esteem, self-image. Woman of God, come bring this that, that throw away over. Self-image. Amen. They steady coming. It's the things you got going on in your life, teenagers, that you don't want your parents to find out. I want you to come. I want you to come. she get out about somebody should be praying. If you have a child that's up in game time and you know they're struggling as a parent, you should be up here in proxy for your son or for your daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, men of God. You know what your kids is dealing with because they're not here. You should be here for them. That's called proxy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are almost done. We are almost done. They coming. They coming. They coming, they coming from up top of everyone. They coming. Yep, this is how we do it. They're going on for Christ. Yeah, you're looking for a church home? This is it, right here. Yes, Lord, where souls are being set free, where people are being delivered and healed. Oh, my God. Come on, y'all. Come on, son. My God. Come on, Minister Alva. Come up here and pray over these young men right here. Get them focused right here. Come on, son. Y'all can't. Y'all got to talk to God. Come on, come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we in there. We in there. That's right. Come on. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. We almost done. We almost done. I want you healed. I want you healed. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We need you to survive now. Come on now, let's talk to God as we get ready to pray. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We all are part of God's body. We stand together. Come on, let's get into agreement. Let's get into agreement. Oh, my God. Come on, take pictures, somebody. Come on, let's get this. You got this, Cornell? Let's get this. Hey, my, this is history in the ministry right here. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I need you to survive. I need you to survive. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Now to those that's here at the altar, stay in that flow. Break it down just a little bit. Break it down just a little bit. Those that's at the altar, we're getting ready to pray. God's commanded blessing over your life. We're getting ready to lead all of us as a body, whether you're up here or not, back to the Father. There was many more that probably should have came that didn't come. There's no condemnation. Because you need to come when the Spirit of God leads you to come. But at the end of the day, I want you to know that we all need each other to survive. I'm going to have my God, my youth pastor to pray for all of us. 
And while he's praying, he's going to lead all of us into the sinner's prayer of reconciliation back to the Father. And I'm going to ask everyone, whether you're up front or whether you're still in your church, to say this prayer because I want to make sure everybody is anchored in God and positioned properly in God. So Pastor Gene, Gene pray the sinner's prayer and speak a blessing over the church, son, as I get ready to pray. The Word of God says that no one comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws. And even those that are sitting uh, in the seats, you may be up front, the Spirit of God, the, the Spirit, the person of the Father, God Himself is drawing you today to Himself. <clears throat> He's drawing you because He loves you. He's drawing you <clears throat> because He died for you. He, he paid the ultimate sacrifice so that whatever sin, whatever mindset, whatever hang up or habit that you've been battling, whatever struggle, Christ, that cross represents victory and reconciliation. What does that word reconciliation mean? It means the wall of separation, the wall that sin has brought between you and God has been destroyed. And even when Jesus was on the cross, and he said, it is finished. There was a, there was a curtain in the, in the temple that ripped in two. You now can come to God freely and openly. And the scripture says, boldly in time of need. And so today as we pray, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, I want you to know, young people, nothing, the scripture says, Romans 8 says, nothing is able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. I don't care what you did in the past. I don't care if you have a prison record. I don't care what, what you did last night. There is nothing, there is no sin, there is no failure that is able to separate you from what Christ did for you at the cross. In fact, the Bible says that the blood is sprinkled on the mercy seat in heaven. What does that mean? That in eternity in heaven, God has said, I forget what you have done. I forget your sins as far as the east is from the west. He has removed our transgressions from us. And we're going to pray. And you're included in that prayer. You're included in what Christ did for you. Touch somebody if you can. We are a family. We are a body. If you're visiting today, we welcome you with open arms. You're welcome to become a part of this family. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Before we pray together, I thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God is drawing, not to myself, not to pastor, not to a church, but you're drawing men and women to yourself that you sent your son to die a bloody death without sin. God, I thank you that the curtain between God and man was ripped in two, and now we can come boldly and receive forgiveness. If you want to receive the Lord and be reconciled to him, pray this after me. Lord Jesus, I recognize that I have been separated from you through my own choices, through my own sin, through my own mindsets, through even mistakes. And God, I thank you today that there is no more separation, that nothing is able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that perfect love casts out fear. I don't have to be afraid today. I don't have to be afraid of death. I don't have to be afraid of God. I don't have to be afraid of life. I don't be, have to be afraid of anything. I can come boldly now and receive forgiveness. I turn away from my sin. I repent. I make a 180 degree turn and I turn away from the devil and his plans I turn away from darkness and I turn to the light that is in found in Christ Jesus and I come and give my heart totally 
to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I thank you for cleansing me from all sin, delivering me from the works of the devil, even delivering me from my own self-defeating mindsets. God, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and just begin to thank God. Just begin to worship Him. Clap your hands. That's all right. Whatever way you feel like. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you.